All right. Tonight, I am making apple wine. And except for an airlock, it's a simple recipe. We got one apple. See, one apple. Cored and peeled. Very motivated. Anyways. Why, you ask? Am I parboiling my apples? Well, first off, all that fungus, I don't want that in the wine. I want to kill off anything that's in there. Um, yes, I know I'm probably killing off natural yeasts, but I will show you how I get natural yeasts. So, it's fall here in New England. It's the pumpkin. See the pumpkin. And a lot of people have apples. And a lot of people go apple picking and all this touristy crap. I find apples. Okay, in people's yards and crap. Nobody wants these. Nobody's going to pay for these. You could probably get these at a farm stand if just for pretty much asking. Tell them you're going to Feed them to your pigs or your chickens or, I don't know, have an apple dunk or something. So, yeah, apples, bar boiling. When I get to the next step, I'll uh, we'll pick up there. All right. I want to say my recipe called for six or eight pounds. I couldn't find it. But those are all my apples, boiled and cored. You want to get rid of all the stems and whatnot and the seeds. You don't want that. It's going to make a bitter wine. I use a lemon baller. And, I mean, it's been a couple hours. It's, it's almost 8 o'clock. But I screw around and, you know, I try to do things like that. Like, that's a good one. That's almost a whole apple. And then, um, I forgot to show you. I poured out the original water and those clean apples this water was brown so my next step is I'm going to bring this up to a decent boil and I'm going to pour enough water to just cover these apples okay now that's going to do two things it's going to break up the starch in the apples and as you can see with the par boiling that this part is the boiled part and that's the original hard apple part um, Oh, I left a piece of stem. You don't want the stem in there. You don't want the seeds in there. Um, let's see, what else? What else can we tell you? Yeah, that's a lot of apples. Uh, clean bucket. This one has a seal. Make sure you get a something with a seal. Um, you're going to let the gases escape by popping a hole in it. Um, I have some airlocks somewhere here. Here, I have one of these fancy airlocks here. They're pretty cheap. You can use a piece of rubber tubing. You can pop a hole in here, anywhere actually, and get a piece of rubber tubing and bring it down into a cup full of water. Um, you could do the balloon technique. Um, usually works with bottles. Um, you get a balloon or a rubber glove and, and tie it around, put it over the neck of a bottle and tie it around and it'll blow up. And then you can, that's when the yeast is eating all the sugars and the starches and making alcohol. And then when it starts to, to deflate, that's when the cycle is coming to its completion and you've pretty much made all your alcohol. Um... I'll pour in the boiling water, like I said, and I'll just let this sit overnight. A, I don't really want to mess with it anymore. I'm tired. Um, B, I want that hot water to break up as much of the sugars and as much of the starches as possible. Um, I know I've killed off all the natural yeasts, but I've also killed off any bacteria, things like that. And we don't want to make vinegar. We want to make a wine. You can make a wine. If you put this wine through, let's say, a still, you'd have some really good moonshine. You could also take this wine 
And here in New England, we call it jacking. You'd take this after you've made your wine and let it distilled in a warm place. And you'd go throw it out in a snowbank and let it freeze over and then pop the cover and pour out the alcohol. And that's called jacking. Um, always wanted to have a TV show. Remember that, that show, Moonshiners? Always wanted to have one named jacking and show people how to jack. If you've never made jack, you don't know jack. It's good stuff. And it's legal to make. I mean, I'm not selling it. This is for my own consumption. And maybe the dog, he's just waiting for apple cores. He likes apple cores. You like apple cores? Huh? You like apple cores? Yeah. Yeah, you see, I got something, huh? Huh? This is my natural yeast. This is my natural yeast. I'll take one container of raisins, throw them in there after I'm done with the boiling. We'll do that together. And uh, stir around with some sugar. Um, I gotta find that recipe because I know I got more than eight pounds. But I'm gonna say this is gonna be at the minimum three pounds of sugar. Um, I like to make my sugar, I, I kind of like to torture myself. I'll take my sugar and pour it into some water and boil it down and make it a liquid and let it cool and then put it in, in the mash. Because at this point, that's what I got. I got a mash. I don't have a wine. I don't have anything right now. Um, let's see. About 30 days. And five gallons with the solids in there. I'll end up with four gallons of really good sweet wine. Um, you can do this with apple juice. Oh, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to talk about that, too. But you got to watch it. Because preservatives in the apple juice, filter water, apple juice, concentrate, absorbic acid, vitamin C. All right, this one might actually work. You, um, I want to say the frozen containers that you can get for like a buck at the grocery store. I want to say those don't have preservatives in them. And I want to say you can make, you can make wine with those. Um, is it? comes to bottle juices you got to watch like I said this has got some absorbic acid in it yeah I mean it'll kill the acid will kill off some of the yeast but you know what I, I bet you this would ferment my I might even try it maybe we'll do that you know what I think that's a good video maybe we'll try that so, um, I know I talked about getting all the stems and seeds out because it makes the wine better. If anybody you know makes dandelion wine, that's how you make a good dandelion wine. You take all the green off the dandelions. And um, that's all I got to say about wine making for right now. So I'll catch you tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. That's all our apples. I cheated this year. I usually get, put a wooden paddle in there and mash them up, but I use the food processor. Four pounds of sugar. You want to get this um, no hotter than I think it's 107 degrees. Yeasty beasties will start to die. So I usually go about body temperature. And I'll throw that. That's... uh however much water in four pounds of sugar and then the floaties in there are, I was pouring the uh, the mash from the apples in this in the same pan and I don't want to make more dishes so that's nothing gross and then for my yeast these are my raisins and not to fill this up all the way Give it about four inches for head space because those yeasty beasties will start to work and it'll create a foam. And yeah, we'll see in about, yeah, I'm gonna, about a week or two. We'll, we'll see what's going on with it. All right, it's a month later. As you see, that's empty. We've made a mess in the wife's kitchen. 
And uh, yeah, I wish I had this a month ago. I showed my buddy how I made the wine and he was like, hey, I got something you might be interested in. And he tried to give it to me, but I gave him 20 bucks. I made him take $20. It looks like it's never been used. But yeah, instead of doing all that foolishness with the Cuisinot, I could uh could have done it like so. So uh yeah the the mush that we had made earlier I wrapped up in um in cheesecloth. I must have busted that one. But that's the mush from the bottom. And all the big apple apple slices and whatnot. And that's it. It's a little pulpy. I strain it out. Through more cheesecloth. And then I end up with this. Which is not pulpy at all. And then I'll leave it in these. I mean these are. I just use these because they're. A lot of people don't know this but. Well, food grade. Plastics. Usually don't grow bacteria. Um. Hence, you can't make vinegar. If you try to make vinegar in a food-grade plastic, it, it doesn't work. Trust me, I know. Milk containers, especially. Um, so I'll let this settle out. And this will settle out and clear, clarify. Then I'll do one of two things with it. I'll either put it in fancy glass bottles or bottles. I got beer, brown beer bottles around. Or I'll let it sit on the porch. Now, this is Thanksgiving Eve of 2019 in New England and uh, if I don't drink it all I will pour I will let it sit on the porch and freeze and then I will pour the alcohol out of the ice and we'll have something called Jack I don't have hard cider I have apple wine right now okay and there's you can drink it like this it's fine I kind of like it you can jack it and it brings up the alcohol and it's more like a, a brandy. Or you can run this through a still and you will get a moonshine. And I've been told will taste like it's been made with peaches. Um, other brandies that are made with peaches uh, or other whiskeys are made with peaches. Um, you know, they're like... Uh, a cheaper version of a Jack Daniel, uh, of a, a Jack. Um, I don't know if I can say the name, but yeah, there's a couple cheaper uh, whiskeys that are made with peaches. And you, if you do it right, except for aging it in a barrel, it'll taste like that. And then if you want to age it and you want to get that whiskey flavor uh, and color and smokiness to it, uh, I have done to some, to some success. I've heard that you can take a piece of oak, char it with a torch and put it in, in your vat and it'll smoke out. Um, that's all I know about that. I just, I make the wine in the jack and I'll be making a lot more wine. I know where I can get some peaches. Um, I live in New England. I'm a forager. Peaches, apples. I know where to get wild grapes. We're going to be seeing a lot more of this bad bird until I get sick of it anyways. But it even comes with the, it even came with a stick. And it looks like it, it never really been used. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So yeah, we'll give her a, and this is all the schlumpy stuff anyways. I'll keep this separate. Because it's the stuff from the bottom with all the yeasty beasties. Which you always get with a wine. You always get yeasty beasties on the bottom. And uh, yeah. That's all I got to say about that YouTube. Happy Thanksgiving.